it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast, and it's been a while since I have done one of these. Uh, the reason being, uh, I actually have a, s a set of about five recorded uh, on the subject of using Vim to send email uh, in conjunction with MUT, and I'm not ready to publish them yet because all of the demo footage consists of video of like my personal and work email accounts, so I can't just publish it unedited. I have to kind of censor and hide things that might be private or confidential. And uh, that is going to take a while and I keep putting it off. So I thought what I would do is just do a lightweight screencast this evening uh, to keep something in the channel for people who might be subscribed and interested. Um, and so what I'm going to talk about is some recent changes I've made to my status line here in Vim. Now, I don't think I've spoken about this in a dedicated way. I might have talked about it in maybe the focus screencast, but as you can see, um, I use the status line uh, with this bright red down here, the file name um, and some metadata. Uh, and I primarily use it to make it obvious which pane is the active split. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I've done lately to enhance this further. Um, started on this GitHub issue here uh, where I said that I was thinking of getting rid of the buffer number, uh, which I previously had in this little red area here. Um, and some discussion ensued, ensued, and I decided, yeah, okay, I'm gonna give it, a, give it a shot, see what it's like. But I wanted to use this area in some way. Uh, I wanted it to communicate something with value um, because I realized that the buffer number wasn't really delivering a lot of value. It was really just a vanity metric because I would know that once my Vim instance has, has had been running for a long time, let's see what I've had open here. Yeah, I've had a few things open. But once my, my Vim instance had been running for a long time, I'd see a, a really high number down here, possibly you know of the order of you know three or four hundred. It's like, wow, I've been using the same Vim instance for days now. Isn't that exciting? Uh, but the truth is, I never actually used the buffer number for any purpose, other than when I would do something like colon ls to see which buffers I had open, which weren't saved, because there would be a little plus next to the the buffer. Um, in which case, I've already listed the buffer numbers and I can see the one that I want to deal with and I would do something like, you know, switch to buffer 12 and I'd be there. Uh, but I don't need that to be visible all the time. So I got rid of it and instead I put a modification uh, symbol there, which had previously been on the right here. Uh, so uh, I, I realized that it wasn't obvious enough. So I'm going to make a modification here. And you'll see there that the plus is now present. If I get rid of it, it goes away. Uh, but on the red background, that plus wasn't really obvious enough. And in fact, even on this green background, it's not obvious enough. Um, I decided to add color to make it even more obvious. So now I have effectively two layers. Um, let me open a different file like this one. So you can see um, I've got blue, uh, green for unsaved and red for saved, no modifications. Um, and if I undo the changes, then it is red. Now I'm not gonna go into detail on how this, how I actually did this, because uh, it's probably not super interesting, but I do wanna make the observation that um, I'm not using Powerline, because uh, it feels like a pretty heavyweight tool. Um, I'm really just using this status line file here, um, which I've got in my plugin folders. I'll put a link to this in the show notes, uh, as well as some auto load functionality, which is in this file. Um, and given that I can hand roll this in like a few dozen lines, it just felt like a worthwhile thing to do. And also gives me like total and utter control of the appearance of the thing where I get to make all the little aesthetic trade-offs that I wanna make without having to fit into somebody else's framework. So I would suggest that if you wanna do the same, don't just copy my dot files, but do what I did and figure out how to add each little piece that you want in the status line. Um, so let's just see, I think that'll show commits related to Vim, there you go. So if you were interested in this, uh, you could look at some of these uh, commits. Uh, I won't go into detail here, they're in my dot files repo. Um, it's not the prettiest code you've ever seen, uh, but it's a neat little trick uh, to make it obvious when you have unsafe changes. So I suggest you have a dabble with that if it's the kind of thing that makes you interested. Um, and on the subject of further screencasts, I'm going to try to clean up these mutt related ones and get them out over the next few weeks. So uh, thanks for your attention and I hope you check back in again soon.